Governor Voltaggio, the founder and chairman of Arizona Beverages, is with me. Now, we ran it through the BLS's inflation calculator. By all rights and what's proper, you should be charging $2.07 for your cans if you were to have kept pace with inflation since it started. You're not going to do that. Why not? Uh, I don't think our customers need another a price increase. And uh, we're just fighting hard to keep, maintain that price so we give consumers a reason to buy us and give consumers a, uh, at least a company recognizes the pain that everybody's gone through. And if everybody pulls together, maybe we get through it together. But even allowing for, uh, you know, you're going to have to eat the extra cost. I mean, I assume you, the cost of making your fine teas have gone up right the way down to the cost of distribution, diesel and manufacturing. They have. Uh, but we've done things behind the scenes, as we've done for my career, 50 years in business, is you do the things that you can't control. Things I can't control, I can't control. But uh, things I can't control, uh, like uh, faster lines, more automation, uh, shipping uh, through using trains, um, lightweight uh, boxes so we get more on the load, um, shipping at night. Those kind of things is what the consumer doesn't see, but that's what I've been doing as a businessman for decades. What I find interesting is that uh, we've certainly got the inflationary crisis now. But you haven't been raising the prices, even in average times, like 2004, 2005, when you know, you've never just decided to pop another cent or two on it, which suggests this is, I mean, this is philosophical for you. Well, it's that, and you know, 99 cents is a, is a hot number. And, it, and it, you know, because of that, we get a lot of attention at retail. You know, the retailers are working with us as well, because as their costs go up, uh, they're not taking margin because the price on a can and the price to them has been stable. Um, and our suppliers who supply us cans and flavors and packing, uh, it's, a, it's a group effort to get this done. You know, over the years, um, we've been able to overcome cost increases, not like now because now it's been exceptional, but in the past, we've been able to do it by light weighting the can, run the cans faster on the line, Mm -hmm. uh, have more facilities in America so we get closer to market. Uh, so we've been all able to offset costs that way. I mean, this is an incredible time. Hopefully this is going to settle out and, and come back to normal because I think uh, it's not sustainable. But nevertheless, we're going to hold on as best we can and give our consumers uh, an opportunity to breathe a little easier when they go shopping. What are your future plans? Because this is the thing I, I'm always fascinated about, it, you know, a company like yours, your product, you manage to distribute it to every corner, every nook, every cranny of, uh, of the country, which is a real achievement. So how are you going to grow? What do you what, what do you want to do next? Well, we, we're constantly introducing new, you know, new things. Uh, we're in different categories that we weren't in a few years ago. Um, we're doing alcoholic beverages, uh, we're doing uh, coffee, for instance, ground, pay cup. Uh, we're doing concentrated coffees. We're doing snacks, food snacks. We have a chip line. Um, you know, the challenge always is to keep be relevant with consumers, but more importantly, uh, give retailers a reason to take you on because of uh, our nifty kind of packaging and our and our mm -hmm. way at the marketplace is kind of different than the big guys. You know, a lot of the large companies use advertising as their vehicle to get shelf space and get consumer awareness. We use packaging and a value story and then a great product inside because the first time buy, somebody buys us, I say they buy it because of the package. And for them forevermore after that, they're buying it because it tastes great and it smells great and, and you know, and, the categories we go into, we try to have the best in category. And those decisions are made in my office by me and my sons and, and some of my uh, close staff here. So we don't have a, a, a big organization burdened with a lot of uh, expensive, and sometimes expensive, but right. more importantly, sometimes <laughs> I, people who are not as engaged as I am. I, I'm, I have to say, I'm fa I'm, I am always fascinated these days by the concept and the practicalities of the family company, which has the ability for decision-making nimbleness, if you will, 
which I think gives mm -hmm. a huge advantage. And I, I'm guessing you found that to be the case during the pandemic. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, like a lot of companies, we were had the same issues of, of, yeah. of people who were concerned and, and we didn't lay anybody off. We didn't furlough anybody. We had we set up people to work from home. We had an office. I was in the office every single day uh, with my key staff, uh, and uh, we we got through it. Uh, a lot of companies, like with this inflation, use the opportunity to take advantage. I think sometimes uh, situations <laughs> exist that are difficult, but you got to work through it. And you know, I've been at it for decades, and the, you know, work together, have good solid people who make decisions as if it's their own. I wish government would do that uh, when they spend uh, taxpayers' money. Um, and I think everybody would be better off. And as an entrepreneur and, um, and a guy who works hard, yeah. his company works hard, what do we have? We take it, you know, we, we don't take for granted our right. success. More important, we don't take advantage of, uh, you know, or t have a situation where we're doing things that are foolishly done because we're not thinking about it. We think about, and we go forward with eyes open with all the information we can. And that's how we've been able to stay in business and compete with giants. Don, I'm very grateful that you joined us today to talk about it. I'm even more grateful that I've got a can of your excellent green tea with ginseng and honey, which I'm <laughs> liberally imbibing and will continue to do so for the rest of the program. Good health, sir. You're good health. Well, Richard, thank you very much. And thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Now, coming up.